Hi, in this lesson we are going to model the break test. This lesson is a part of the full crash course on Udemy where we learn SOLIDWORKS by building the BAC mono race car. So let's get started. The disc is a part of the brake assembly which consists of the disc, the caliper and the panel assembly. In modeling the disc we can learn some of the commands which can be seen here. The workflow, methodology and the tools that we will learn can also be seen in the mind map. The source file for this lesson and the mind map can also be downloaded from the Udemy page. So let's see how can we approach modeling the disc. So I've listed three approaches here and there can be even more if you think. The most efficient approach from where I see is the approach C in which we create one half of the disc and then simply use the mirror tool to produce the other half. Now it may look like we are giving too much thought into producing a simple disc but it will become apparent when we build large assemblies that modeling approach makes a world of difference. Alright let's fire up SOLIDWORKS and see some action. Start by clicking the new icon and double clicking on the part icon to start a new part. To start with, open a sketch on the front plane by right clicking on the plane and selecting sketch. Use the mouse gestures menu by right clicking and dragging to select the rectangle tool. Click once to start the rectangle and then click again to end it. Use the escape to release the tool. Now the rectangle can be made precise by using smart dimension tool. Simply activate the tool by either using the mouse gestures or from the sketch toolbar. The diameter of the disc is 326mm, but since we are going to use the revolve tool, we have to enter half that value. So you can simply enter 326 divided by 2 and the software does the rest. Set the width to 4.7mm. You can refer the dimensions and all other source files from the lesson resource from Udemy. Now, it is always the best practice to keep the part centered with the origin, so we will place the rectangle on one side of the origin. Let's set the dimension to be 10mm. Now you can notice that even after setting all the dimensions of the rectangle, two sides are still blue. It is simply because their vertical position can still change. To constrain those, simply make the bottom line and the origin coincident by control selecting both entities and selecting the coincident relation. Now that we have fully defined the rectangle, simply select the revolve tool from the standard toolbar. Choose the axis and the software will rotate the profile 360 degrees to produce the disc. To create the fins at the center, open a sketch on the plane on the inside by clicking it and selecting sketch. Come normal to it by simply hitting the space bar and selecting the appropriate face. Now select the parallelogram from the property manager since we need to orient it as we need and also size it. Now to replicate this shape in the circular fashion, select the rectangle and use circular pattern tool from the sketch toolbar. Now we can make as many as we want, let's set it to 21 for now. Since we are done with the pattern, let's extrude the sketch. Since all of these are closed profiles, we don't have to select the region. Let the extrusion height be 5mm, which is half the overall rib thickness, since we are going to mirror the whole part. Now that we are done with the fins, let's produce the holes. For producing the pattern, we need the sketch and the base feature. So open a sketch on the inside plane and create two circles. To constrain the circle a bit, join them with construction line and use parallel relation between the line and one edge of the fin.
You can define the relation between the sketch entity and any entity of the geometry even on the different plane as long as the software can project the other entity on the sketch plane. This approach helps avoid create extra entities since more entities mean more things to troubleshoot. Now let's create a circular pattern by selecting these two entities and using circular pattern tool. Select the origin as the center of the pattern, set the number of instances to 21 again and exit. You can also dimension the instances by checking the option. Now that we are done with the sketch, select extrude cut tool. Select the end condition to through all, in which case the cut will progress all the way through the geometry. Now we will create the cut at the center and then produce the inside wiggy pattern. To do so, simply select the plane and instead of creating a circle and defining a dimension, use the offset tool. The offset tool replicates a selected entity at a distance which is set as offset distance in the property manager. The advantage is that it maintains the design intent and automates the model, rebuilding in case we change any previous feature. Let's set the offset distance as 60mm. Notice that the sketch is black, indicating that it is fully defined by the reference edge. Let's hit the extrusion button to generate the step. Now in this case we will not extrude from sketch plane. To make an intelligent design, select the outer plane in the from field. We do this to preserve the design intent since no matter how thick the disk is, the step height will still be 3mm. Let's enter the extrusion height to be 3mm here. To produce the wavy pattern, let's open a sketch on the plane as shown. Here we will use the spline tool. With the spline tool, we can create virtually any curve and we can control its shape and size using the control points and manipulating spline handles. Precise values can be provided to the spline handles to control the length and curvature by using both Smart Dimension and the Property Manager. You can even add relations to the spline handles to control their position and orientation relative to other entities. Now use the mirror to produce the other half which ensures symmetry. Now we could produce the pattern using the sketch tools but just to try something new here let's use the features. So hit the extrude button and this time use the end condition as up to surface. Let's hit the circular pattern feature from the feature toolbar. You can use any circular entity to define the axis, be it a circular edge, surface or a sketch entity. Next select the features to extrude. Use the flyout menu if you are unable to select from the property manager since it can happen in many cases. Set the number of instances which matches the desired geometry better. Set the instances as equally spaced. In this case, the number of lobes seem a bit smaller compared to the target design. So let's go back and change the sketch and the number of instances. Now, since we have created all the desired features on one side, 
let's mirror and merge this body to create the whole disk select the mirror tool from the feature manager and then select the mirror plane now the mirror plane is the plane about which the geometry is mirrored and it can be any flat surface may it be of the geometry or the primary or the reference planes which can also be created in this case we will use the inside plane of the ribs Check the merge solids option which will join the newly created geometry with the old one. Alright guys, we have just created the disk. In the next session we will create the caliper and after that the brake barrel assembly. And then we will go on to create the whole model of uh, the BSC mono race car. So see you in the next video and don't forget to join us on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. You can also support us on Patreon.